Good morning and welcome to our Open Day. The reason I am addressing you all today is because of one thing, your girls. I know that we have a truly thrilling joint venture with Cranmore, which is a wonderful opportunity, and I'm genuinely excited about our Diamonds model, which combines outstanding educational and social benefits. It will be first class. But unsurprisingly for the headmistress of a girls' school, I am all about the girls. Why? Well, because in the late 19th century, when a Cambridge professor walked into a lecture hall to find only women present, he promptly left the room saying, as there is nobody here, I shall not lecture today. Because it wasn't so long ago that young ladies couldn't make a decision about the future for themselves. Their fathers or husbands made it for them. And you don't need an education to do as you are told. In the 19th century, girls' schooling consisted of reading, writing, and arithmetic, but it was haphazard. Poorer girls were lucky to get the basics before being sent out to earn a wage, and richer ones were educated to run a house, embroider, dance, and make attractive conversation. Indeed, educating women at all was a perilous business, as it was thought to cause the womb spontaneously to wander around the body, rendering her sterile. Of course, the relative fertility of an educated woman had to remain, if you'll pardon the expression, an entirely academic question, as she became so immediately and profoundly unattractive that the question of her marrying at all remained in grave doubt. The haphazard curriculum was provided by governesses, who stuffed random facts into girls' minds, including what one must do in a thunderstorm at night, which is apparently pull your bed into the middle of the room, pray and go to sleep. This was not the governess's fault. They too had been let down by an education system that perpetuated triviality. If girls were going to progress, there had to be improvements. Step forward Victorian dynamo Emily Davis, who leaves a lasting impression in the field of education. It is thanks to this formidable lady that girls are now able to take GCSEs. She persuaded the local authorities that the Cambridge Junior Locals, as they were then called, should be open to 16-year-old girls as well as boys. 86 girls were duly rounded up and many passed the examinations and, to the shock, of the watching world, which predicted utter disaster, they passed the examinations without catching a fatal brain fever, or having hysterics, or fainting, or going insane. There wasn't even any scandal. And buoyed by this, Emily then set about the small matter of inventing A-levels. A-levels didn't even exist for boys at the time, but the higher locals for girls came into being in 1869. Soon, even the boys' schools were using them, and they became the standard examination for university entrance, as they remain today. We've come a long way, and it is my privilege, our privilege, to play even a small part in the education of girls. St. Teresa's is a truly special place. We are blessed with an exceptionally beautiful site, and it is a joy both to educate and be educated here. We believe in a values-based education, honouring our Catholic heritage, though open to all faiths and none, in which girls live and breathe five central tenets that are fundamental to our existence. We concentrate on one value per year in rotation to allow for a thorough exploration of each value, culminating in our Values Week. Faith in its broadest possible meaning through an exploration of what it is to love. Character. In an uncertain world, and the future by nature is unpredictable, and at the moment it seems to be doubly so, our young people need grit, determination, flexibility, resilience, and a good sense of humour. Community. Community spirit is at the core of St. T's, and never was this more in evidence than when we were in lockdown. The initiatives, from baking for the NHS, to organising an extraordinary game of virtual Cluedo using the rooms, teachers and items that one might find at school. It was a real highlight. Compassion. It is vital to show humility and respect. It is a privilege to live where we live and St. T's girls are not entitled and kindness is our preeminent driver. And intellect. It's not about being clever, it's about being curious and taking pride in the joy of academic study for everyone. Education is a special gift, and once gained, it can never be taken away. So what of our academic life? 
Well, we don't subscribe to league tables, which is a rather narrow measure of a school's calibre, in my opinion. And it's also one that services the school and not the child. We will never ask a child to leave just to ensure that our league table position is bolstered. How could we? It's just wrong. And it sends a message of you're not good enough to the pupil, which I found to be fairly catastrophic to the girl child in particular. Instead, we measure progress from beginning to end and engage in our rounded education with a smorgasbord of extracurricular activities. It is our reputation for adding value to each pupil that sets us apart. So what does this mean? Well, all girls take a standardised test produced by Durham University at the beginning of Year 7, which produces a set of GCSE predictions. We use this information in all sorts of ways to inform our teaching. And then we wait. We teach your daughters over the years. We provide stretch both within and outside the classroom. We assess, we intervene, we cajole, we encourage, we nurture and support, and we provide nourishing opportunities. These include our enrichment society, the maths challenge, science olympiads, the top of the bench chemistry competition, outstanding dramatic productions, which last year was The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, and also a production of Les Miserables that we are rearranged and filmed on the day that schools were requested to close their doors in the afternoon. There are huge opportunities within music and art and some seriously outstanding results in sport, whilst maintaining a sport for all attitude. We also have an inter-house Scrabble tournament, what a spectator sport that is, a ukulele club and a board game society. We provide designated and tailored Oxbridge assistance from year 10. Our teachers are extraordinarily committed and the opportunities that your daughter has to thrive in the senior school are immense. Meanwhile, in the midst of all this learning and stretch and busyness, their baseline GCSE predictions sleep soundly, watched over by staff, and monitored by a few people in charge of an awful lot of spreadsheets. And then one day in August, eventually our St. T's Year 11s nervously enter school to receive their actual GCSE results. The baseline predictions wake up, and after some computational magic, the value-added data is produced by measuring prediction against outcome. In 2019, outcome exceeded prediction in every single department of the school with many adding an entire grade to predictions, and in some cases, nearly two. Indeed, in 2020, a slightly different year in terms of examination administration, our girls still did as proud, averaging a 1.4 increase. Put simply, a C grade prediction, which is now called a grade four, can be turned into a B, which is called a grade six. The Bs can become A stars. The most impressive aspect, however, is that our highest achieving pupils are not necessarily the ones with the strongest baseline test scores. One girl in a previous cohort had predictions of high sixes and sevens across the board, no doubt a bright girl. But she did something extraordinary, gaining nine grade nines in her GCSEs, adding two grades to each of her subjects. This kind of success, however, is not unique, but occurs by dint of all the attention, dedication and determination shown by pupils and staff in the senior school. In terms of university entrance, we have outstanding success, with very good rates of acceptance by Russell Group universities, including interviews at Oxbridge, as well as art colleges such as Central St. Martins and the Royal College of Music. Our girls lead, uh, leave us to read a huge range of subjects, which in 2020 included engineering, mathematics, law and the humanities. We will always care about all abilities at St Teresa's, and we are fundamentally about producing substantial, kind and fearless women. It is my fervent belief that intellectual aspiration is not an elitist ideal. We will equip your daughters with the tools that she needs in order to achieve her potential by encouraging curiosity, determination and aspiration, ably supported by her teachers who give freely of their time and their talents. In short, happy girls thrive and we seek to stretch and challenge everyone in an engaging and lively manner within a stimulating, welcoming and inspirational environment. Thank you very much for watching.